One addition to the Fallout series that has been accepted rather well is settlement building, where you, the player, can create your own town for various wastelanders to inhabit. Still, even though it was mostly accepted by the player base, it is not without controversy. Let's talk about settlement building. Now, obviously, when a feature is accepted by a group, it is not done so without purpose. One thing that many people love about the settlement building system is the creative freedom and expression it allows. People can have elaborate bases and towns full of eye candy, much of the same reason Minecraft is insanely popular. Though, of course, it's not nearly to the same level as a block game. And this creative freedom allows a central hub for the player, a place to always return to, where they can have a trophy room full of collected weapons and clothing as mementos of their great adventure throughout the wasteland. Or, more practically, a convenient place to modify their gear or store their excessively hoarded goods. True, some of this can apply to the post-classic games as well. After all, Fallout 3 and New Vegas gave the player a home to go to. Megaton has one, Novak had another, but nearly all of them are a bit cumbersome to get to, having to fast travel to a specific town and then run to a door to go through a second loading screen. Though the sink of Old World Blues does remedy this thanks to the Big Mountain Transportal Ponder, and even then, it's still not as convenient as just laying down a welcome mat and using that as your fast travel point. Plus, none of the post-classic homes really feels particularly special with the exception of the sink, thanks to the various personalities. In Fallout 4 and 76, by the same token, your modern Fallout home is special because you built it. It's your creative expression. It's part of your in-game identity. That said, the home you built isn't the easiest thing to create. Eye collision detection at times, snapping being both a blessing and a curse, and the amount of time you can dump into putting together a relatively simple design because it just doesn't look right. And from an aesthetic standpoint, some people aren't huge fans of the whole cover designs, even under the post-war setting. Still, there's mods for that. Speaking of mods, there's plenty of settlement-based ones. One of the most popular being Sim Settlement which allows settlers to build their own homes and use plots much like, well, SimCity, a beloved mod given how the game has only you doing anything at all, ever. Well, you asked how you could help. I told you. Did you mean it or not? Definitely odd given how often Sturgis likes to beat a hammer at the same pre-war house to absolutely no change. But while mods do solve a personal problem a player may have, they do not forgive a vanilla experience. And one thing they cannot seem to solve it's the broken pathfinding. Settlers often get trapped behind walls, unable to figure out that there's an object in front of them. Plus, many of the named settlers will complain constantly about things, despite their needs being met, and the rest of the settlers are boring no-name types. Boring really seems to be the theme with the game's settlements, since every settlement you can make generally lacks a personality. They will all act the same and are all over the map, so much so that many people feel that the settlement system took over the actually interesting towns, resulting in only two traditional ones, those being Diamond City and Good Neighbor. The mass amount of player settlement locations also drives at another matter. Player settlements really feel pointless, not necessarily from a gameplay standpoint, but from a lore standpoint. It feels like it doesn't really need to exist. I know that the general argument is that you, the sole survivor, can make a home for the Wastelanders, but I find it odd that so many people are surviving without an established home 200 years after the Great War. Of course, for Preston and friends, this is much, much more sensible. They had a home, Quincy, and that was destroyed by the Gunners, for reasons. But for everyone else, the people you summon with your amazing fancy radio signal, it feels less purposeful. A lot of the land that you take over that have people in it are farm homes in the middle of nowhere, surrounded by monsters and the like, rather than the more safe and secure established towns. It's just odd. Perhaps the Institute is destroying communities? They are responsible for the end of the Commonwealth Provisional Government talks. But the game doesn't make it clear if the Institute is causing mass homelessness or not. Maybe it'd have been better if the Institute was a bit more overt rather than covert. One thing that really helped cement the idea that Caesar's Legion was a true threat was Nipton being crushed. Making it more apparent with first and second gen sense in various destroyed towns may have helped make your goals feel more important. There were towns, but the Institute eliminated them, and the survivors ran off to hide. Could have had the sole survivor even seen Quincy when it was flourishing during a quest, but come back to it being under fire and with the survivors on the run. 
perhaps even changing the Gunners to the Institute, since the Gunners are a background nuisance at best regardless. But I don't know, maybe the mystique is part of design direction, something about human and scent uncertainty, the broken mask and paranoia and all that, Schrodinger's threat. As it stands, it just feels like an unnecessary, albeit fun, addition, though it encourages people like myself to go for bases rather than settlements. The base only thing lends itself nicely to Fallout 76, with guys who couldn't care less about the settlers and just want a cool looking home. Or plain homes in my case. I have a box. A boring wooden box with the neatest stuff. All that said, it feels like this was just an idea that someone at Bethesda had, whether inspired by mods or not, and was like, hey, this would be cool, and they implemented it. And it works somewhat okay, but as a plot point, it was really half-baked. However, it is fun, and I see it sticking around. Actually, I know it is. It's part of Starfield, which seems like it was tuned up a bit with a sort of Sims-like menu working, though it's called an outpost there. Space travel and colonizing other planets is certainly at home with such a system, of course. But if it's brought back for Fallout, which I feel is very likely, I hope they take what they learned from Starfield, some knowledge about Sim Settlement's popularity, the automation, and spruce it up, along with making some of the aesthetics less focus on the gritty post-apocalyptic stuff. We are building new homes, after all. I know it looks cool, but there's no reason to have ceilings with holes in them. That's not going to block out any rain. It's silly. But what about you guys? Do you like settlement building? And what would you change about it, if anything?